Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer, and this is The Outer Wild, a brilliant exploration game that flips you on your head several times, and a few more yet to come. Last episode, we learned the fate of the Nomai. The interloper contained a stone that held ghost matter within. As the comet got closer to the sun, the ghost matter exploded, spreading in every direction bringing the Nomai civilization in our solar system to an end. We also discovered how significant the quantum moon was to the Nomai. With them in mind, we learned the quantum roles and made the journey ourselves. When we landed here, we were greeted by a dead Nomai named Solanum. If we wander the quantum moon, her shuttle will eventually appear before us. Boarding the shuttle, we find a message she left behind. Solanum is very excited she is about to step foot on the quantum moon. She mentions she will have to make the rest of the journey to the shrine on foot. We don't know why the moon greets people on the south pole, but it always does. Solanum used to find such unknown sinister, but is more accepting of the nature of things now. We also aren't sure why we have to travel as far north as we can, but we also have to do that. Once we reach a natural barrier, we can circle it until we find the shrine the Nomai mentioned. Entering the shrine, we can use a ball to close the door and another to activate the shrine. The lights come on and we see some writing appear on the wall, next to the paintings of the homes of the quantum rolls. This writing just reminds us of these rolls we learned the last episode. Now is the time to use those rolls. Using the ball to turn off the lights, we look at the moon locator on the wall and turn on our flashlight. It tells us the moon is around dark bramble. Turning off our light, then turning it back on, we see the moon has moved to Giant's Deep. Exiting the shrine, we see a giant tornado that mimics the one on the planet it orbits. The tornado prevents us from going any further north, so we can enter the shrine to try again. Doing the flashlight trick, the wall tells us we are now orbiting Timber Hearth. Leaving the shrine, we can see an open path leading north. From here, we can head to the North Pole to find the shrine again that's able to take us to the sacred sixth location. Once we do, we can enter and turn on our light once again. This entangles us with the tower. As we turn the light back on, the wall tells us we are now at the sixth location. Looking down, the ground is a blue, crystal-like substance. Opening the door, we can exit the shrine. As we exit, we notice the walls here look just like the quantum stones we find throughout our solar system. These walls funnel us down a single pathway. Once we make our way through an archway, we see a hole in the sky. It appears to be sucking matter up through it, just like we would imagine a black hole in our world would do. Walking through the next archway, we see something even more unbelievable. A Nomai stands before us, and this one is not a skeleton like we are used to. The robes and masks they are wearing are quite beautiful. Walking up to them and asking them a question, we can see it's Solanum, a female Nomai who grew up on Ember Twin if my memory serves correct. There, as a young Nomai, she questioned the motives of the Eye of the Universe as a lot of Nomai died when arriving to chase it. Yet, as an adult, she now stands closer to the eye than she ever has before. Though we asked her a question, she doesn't directly respond. Instead, she uses her walking stick to create stones. Each of these stones represents something different, with two determining how Solomon will respond to us as we ask questions. These two being identify and explain. The other four stones represent the quantum moon, the eye of the universe, you as in Solanum, and me as in us. Pairing each of these stones tells us something different. Asking Solanum to identify us, she tells us we are the first Harthian she has ever met. She appreciates that we can understand her language, but mostly appreciates the fact that we have four eyes. Asking about the quantum moon reveals something interesting. The quantum moon is natively the eye of the universe's moon. Asking about the eye, Solomon tells us we are orbiting it now. Though we can't see it, 
The eye must be the sixth location. Solomon believes we are on an extremely distant orbit around our solar system's sun. If we insert the identify and explain stones into the slots, Solonim tells us these are the two tenets of the Nomai principle. In other words, when a Nomai finds something, they are compelled to find out what it is and then explain its nature and how it works. A good view of the world, if you ask me. Solonim tells us she has made this journey here in order to be close to the eye of the universe. That's why the journey to the moon was so special to the Nomai. She also explains the quantum shards found on other planets look like the moon does now, so this must be its natural state. She goes on to say the moon's proximity to the eye must be what gives it its quantum property. Another hint to that is how the moon seems to exhibit the features of the planet it is orbiting at the time. Asking about the eye, we get to the meat of the conversation. Solonim says there is a fundamental uncertainty throughout the universe, and the closer one gets to the eye, the more that uncertainty grows. But observing an uncertain object forces it to collapse into a certain state. This is why the Nomai were so obsessed with the eye. What would happen if you forced the most uncertain object in the universe to revert to a certain state? That became the greatest question to the Nomai, and their greatest mission to find the answer. To that extent, Solomon wishes she could visit the eye, and we wish we could take her, but plugging in another stone we learn something interesting. Solomon doesn't think she is quite alive. She doesn't age here and she just feels off. Remember the Nomai died over 200,000 years ago. She is able to live here as she is entangled with the moon. All of the other possibilities of Solonim lay dead on the other versions of the quantum moon due to the ghost matter explosion. She is stuck here to live out the rest of her days. Hopefully our brief conversation with her broke up the monotony for her. Now done with our conversation with Solonim, we can say goodbye and jump through the hole in the sky. That spits us back to Timber Hearth's version of the quantum moon. From here, I guess it's really best to reset the loop, as jumping through the atmosphere just spits us out around a random planet. With our feet on familiar ground, we can think about what just happened. Holy crap, we just met a Nomai. And not just any Nomai. We've been reading about Solomon's messages since she was a little girl playing with an anglerfish on Ember Twin. And she gave us one last mission reach the eye of the universe, and cause it to collapse into a single possibility. To do so, we will have to find the tracking module that is missing from the cannon. A previous projection stone showed us the tracking module is underwater at Giant's Deep. Heading to the liquid planet, we can find the tornado rotating counterclockwise. Entering this shoots us down beneath the current. This reveals a big core to the planet that looks black, but we can see coral inside. We can also see electricity flowing through the core, preventing our ship or us from passing through the barrier. To get through, we have to get inside one of the jellyfish floating nearby. They must be causing the electrical charge we find here. Entering a jellyfish from below protects us from the electricity around us. Once we are inside the creature, we can ascend to the top of the jellyfish, and it will start descending through the barrier. We can tell once we pass through by a bright red light below. Once we do, we can exit the jellyfish and look around. Spotting the tracking module, we can make our way in. We spot another tube and ball interface. Plugging the ball into the first slot tells us the module is still tracking the data from probe 9404 and it shows us the path it took through the solar system. The next slot shows us all trajectories fired, and the floating ring tells us that probe 9354 found all the signals they were looking for to identify the eye of the universe. The difference between those two numbers are likely the numbers of times we have died during our travels, as the statue should have activated when the probe found the eye. So I died 50 times during my playthrough, 
poor Harthian? The last slot shows us three strange symbols. The ring tells us this data was retrieved from the Ash Twin Project, and the symbols displayed here are the coordinates to the eye of the universe. We now have all the information needed to reach the eye. It's going to be a scary journey, but it seems like the only chance we have to stop this supernova somehow. Deciding to make this trip would mean this is our last trip, as removing the advanced warp core we would need ends the time loop, keeping our solar system safe. With no choice left, we head to the Ash Twin Project. Once we get inside, we can walk past everything to turn off the gravity. Things seem different now we may never see this place again. Once we turn off the gravity, we can throw the other switch to open the advanced warp core's case. Flying up, we can grab the warp core, sealing our fate. Now, the clock is on like never before, because if this sun goes supernova, we are truly dead. Warp core in hand, we can make our way to the white hole, warp pad here to exit the Ash Twin project. Then head to our ship to get our journey started. From here, we can head to Dark Bramble to find the vessel. Heading there, we notice the music has changed. The game is letting us know what we did was significant. We go through Dark Bramble just like we did back at the beginning of the series. Tracking the distress beacon left behind by Escape Pod 3, and from there, following a trail of light left behind by the Nomai who died there to a Bramble Seed. We have to fire our probe into the seed and then follow the further signal. It'll take you through anglerfish territory, so be sure to be quiet. Once we reach the vessel, we start to get nervous. Entering the vessel once again, it's hard not to remember the Nomai who have gotten us this far. Once we enter the control room, we can insert the advanced warp core. Plugging in the core activates the artificial gravity, allowing us to walk around freely. From here, we can power the coordinate console. Sliding a ball on the floor to the right opens the console, and the coordinates appear on our in-game screen. Once we enter them using a small ball, the console sinks back into the ground. Moving a bigger ball back up, a black hole opens and the whole vessel teleports. Going over to the window in a now-functioning vessel, we see what must be the eye of the universe, as well as our sun, though it's very small in the distance. Looking around, it seems like the vessel was repaired, but the doors are closed so we can't go explore it. If we spend long enough here on the vessel, we can witness our sun going supernova from a safe distance. As down below, what looks like a dust is being sucked into the quantum planet, or whatever it is. As light dances around in the dust, other galaxies also flicker out in the background as we wait. The sun's explosion looks like a firework from so far away. But then we realize, as that firework fades, so does everything we know. All of the Harthians, all of the Nomai ruins we spend so much time in are gone. We don't have memories rushing back to us. The time loop is over. Anything that happens to us here is permanent. Knowing this, we can move the ball back to the other side of the advanced warp core. As the power transfers, another small black hole opens, leading us down to the eye of the universe. But we will save that for the next episode. In this episode, we got to meet a Nomai named Solanum. She helped us along on our journey and prompted us to visit the eye of the universe. It was a strange moment meeting a Nomai, one I'll never forget. If only we could have took Solanum to the eye of the universe with us. The supernova did look beautiful from here, but with the warp core powering the vessel, everyone in our solar system died. We are all alone. The only thing to live for now is the mission Solanum asked us to do, and curiosity alone. For now, this is the Lore Explorer, diving deep into the story so you don't have to.